The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Good morning, everyone. This is Father Theodore Hunt bringing you greetings from the Church of Saint Stephen Downsview. I wish to extend a very warm welcome to everyone joining us today as we mark the third Sunday after Epiphany. If you are visiting with us for the first time online today, we are especially delighted to have you with us. Thank you again for coming. In the next few minutes, I invite you to listen prayerfully as we are led in our first and the second scripture lessons by Beverly Brown and Erica Martin, respectively. In today's sermon, I will address you on the topic, Called and Made Worthy. Leading us as we pray and intercede today will be Hyacinth Nwosu. Eternal God, help us always to remember your presence with us now as we worship together as your people. And may all our hearts be lifted up in humble prayer and joyful praise. To the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that you will enjoy the rest of your worship time with us today, and may God richly bless you. A Collect for the Third Sunday After Epiphany Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your Spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jonah, chapter 3. Reading verses 1 to 5 and verse 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The, the word, word of the Lord. Lord. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated as I recite for you Psalm number 62, Psalm 62, reading from verse 6 to 14. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please remain seated for the second reading from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 to 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark chapter 1, reading from verse 14 to 20. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful once again to have been gathered in your presence at this time by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we ask that as we have been gathered by your Spirit, Lord, so now you write your word upon our hearts and our lives. Help us, Lord, to perceive your calling upon our lives, and grant us grace, O Lord, to respond immediately with obedience and faith. We ask and we pray these things in Jesus Christ, who is our living and present Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. It is good to see all of you again today. I want to share with you, friends, some words from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, reading from verse 17 to 18. Mark 1, verse 17 to 18. Mark writes, And Jesus said to Simon and to Andrew, Follow me, 
and I will make you fish for people. Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And we are told immediately they left their nets and they followed him. As we continue in this season after the Epiphany, our scripture readings continue to point us to the manifestation, the making known of the one true and living God to his human creature and to the resulting effect or the resulting impact of his manifestation upon our lives. And I want to suggest that that effect, that impact, is our experience of being called or being drawn to this living God, to this one who calls us to himself. So last week we heard about the call of the prophet Samuel. And in John's gospel from last week, we heard the calling of Philip and of Nathaniel. You remember Nathaniel was sitting there under the tree even as Jesus was able to see him. Today we hear the call and the mission of the prophet Jonah. And in Mark's gospel, we hear the calling of Simon and Andrew, his brother, and then later on of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Friends, we exist in the presence of the God who calls his people into his service. That's the kind of God that we serve. The God who calls his people into his service. And our being called is first and foremost an act of God's grace. We live in the presence of a God who calls us into his service. And his calling is first and foremost an act of his grace. Now the experience of God's call upon our lives will often take different forms within the community of faith. And so if you hear people from time to time talking about the sense that God has called them to a particular role or to do a particular thing, it comes to us in different forms. And so there are times when the community of faith, the gathered community may discern that God is calling a particular individual from within that community to offer their gifts, as it were, in order to serve the wider body of believers, perhaps in some role of leadership. And so that's what we hear uh, in the instance of Paul and Barnabas. Remember, they prayed and they laid hands on them and sent them off, sensing that God had called them to this new mission. This is the sense in which we, within the Anglican Church, understand ordination. When God calls an individual through the gathered body of believers to serve as a deacon or priest or to be consecrated to serve in the role as a bishop. Now on some occasions there are individuals who start off in a different way. They may start off by offering their gifts in some small way. Oh well, you know, I'll come and I'll help to clean the church or to do something on that level, right? They start off in some small way but as they continue along, as they continue along their journey and then pause and look back over their lives, they are able to discern how God has led them step by step even deeper into the life of the community, into the community of faith in this cycle of calling and equipping. Calling and equipping. And it goes on and on. And then, of course, there are others who have sensed God's call, equipping them for a specific task at a specific time. And so it may not be a call to some long service in particular, but just for a certain thing at a certain time, and they sense that God has called them to do or to lead or to take action in a particular way. But friends, no matter how God's call has been sensed, and God calls us, the simple point that I want to make is that God calls us all, all of us. By virtue of our baptism as believers in Christ, we have all been called by God's grace into God's service. And so your baptism is like your ordination. 
You are called to service, not to spectate, right? We are all called into service. And the God who calls us by grace is the very same God who will equip us and who will make us worthy of our calling. And so what might we learn then from our scriptures for today? Firstly, I believe that because of who God is, we learn that even the prophet of God is not exempt from God's call to repentance. Even God's holy prophet is not exempt from God's call to repentance. And you know what? That's all of us. We are those called to live and speak prophetically. We are all familiar with the account of the prophet Jonah. Remember, he was first unwilling to go to the people of Nineveh and to call them to repentance as God had commanded him. Because you see, Jonah knew. Jonah knew God to be a gracious and merciful God, a God who was slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, ready to relent from punishing. And perhaps Jonah didn't feel that the people of Nineveh were worthy of God's forgiveness. And so what did Jonah do? Jonah tried to go in exactly the opposite direction to Nineveh. He tried to flee from the presence of God. And so God, in his wisdom, gave Jonah a three-day, three-night stay in the belly of a very large fish in order for Jonah to come to his senses, to catch himself, in order for him to heed God's call. In other words, Jonah, the prophet of God, needed to repent. He needed to turn away from all that drew him away from God and to turn back toward what God had called him to do and what God had called him to be. And so God brought these circumstances to bear in Jonah's life in order to bring him exactly where he needed to be. God made Jonah worthy of his calling. If it had been left up to Jonah, Jonah would have been somewhere in Tarshish, in the opposite direction. But God made him worthy of this calling to which he had been called. And today's reading tells us that after Jonah walked but a day's journey into Nineveh, and after he gives the prophetic warning, the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed the fast. And everyone, from the great to the small, they put on sackcloth, a symbol of their repentance. And they turned from their evil ways. We are told that God changed his mind about the calamity that he was going to bring upon them. And he didn't do it. Because God is merciful and gracious and forgiving. And friends... On the third day, Jesus, who descended to the dead, rose again victoriously from the grave. And so Jonah serves as a foretaste of what was coming. And so Jesus' prophetic word has now gone forth into all the world. And I pray that God would give us the grace and give us the courage like Jonah and like the people of Nineveh, to truly and sincerely repent in every moment of every day in response to his prophetic life lived among us. That he would grant us the courage to turn from our evil ways and from all that draws us away from him. The second thing I believe that we learn is that God's call is a call that is rooted in God's grace. He didn't have to call us, friends. God did not have to call us. And I believe that there is something deeply appropriate about responding with a sense of urgency and responding without delay. I'd imagine someone gave you a fantastically large gift at Christmas, and you knew that it was a fantastic gift because you heard the whispers. And that gift came, and you just let it sit right there. You didn't open it. A year passed by, maybe two, it started to gather dust. And you just let it sit there. 
I mean, how ridiculous would that be, right? But that is how we are in terms of our calling and God's grace. We, there is something appropriate about responding in the moment with urgency and without delay. And so Mark tells us that as Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew, and later James and John, and when he said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. He says immediately, immediately they left their nets and they followed him. And the scriptures don't say, friends, what made Jesus' call so compelling or what made these would-be disciples respond with such urgency and without delay. The scriptures don't tell us. But like a reflexive response, Jesus called and they simply followed. He called and they answered. He called and they came. And we know from the scriptures, whenever we hear anything about the disciples, we know that they had no idea what Jesus was calling them to do or where this journey of faith would lead them. But they knew enough to take those first important steps of faith. They knew enough to take those first steps of obedience. And as we know, Jesus is the one who would make them worthy of their calling. It had nothing to do with them, but it had to do with God. And friends, God is still calling prophets today, all of us. He is still calling prophets today who first need to recognize their own need for repentance. And he is still calling disciples. He's still calling apprentices, those who are willing to heed his call. Maybe we don't know all of the details on the front end. We don't know exactly what is going to happen. But he is calling those who are willing to trust him and to trust that he will make them deeply worthy of this calling to which he calls us all. He just wants us to say yes and to come along. Now in this time of pandemic, we know that, that families and households have been spending more time together than ever before. Right? And for some people, that, that, that caused a lot of stress. Right? It, it's a sore point. It has tested the limits of many family relationships. Right? That song, you in your small corner and I in mine, we, <laughs> we like to have it that way sometimes. But friends, I believe more positively that this has also provided for us an opportunity to minister to one another. I'll say it again. This has provided us an opportunity to minister to one another. Ministry can happen right within our own homes. And even beyond our immediate dwelling to those who we know. To those with whom we have already established some kind of relationship. I mean, when was the last time that you prayed together with the members of your household, with the members of your family? Whether it was over a meal, or in thanksgiving for some gift that God has granted, or just some specific concern. When was the last time you prayed together? Maybe there's someone right within your own home, within your immediate or your extended family, among your friends and relatives who does not ordinarily attend church, or who has drifted away from the faith, or simply has no interest or time for matters of faith. But maybe in this time of pandemic, you have a friend or a relative who's really hurting right now, who's going through a difficult time, a real struggle, some crisis in their lives, whether physically or mentally or emotionally or even spiritually. And they simply need someone to remind them, to let them know you are not alone. Because God is holding you and that crisis in the palm of his hands. 
And maybe, friends, that someone who needs to remind them is you. You see, God doesn't make mistakes. In this ministry to which God calls us, you see, it's not first about us. And I think that's what Jonah had to realize. That's what the disciples had to realize. It's not first about us. Nor is it about whether or not we feel worthy or equipped to offer it. Because you know what? We are all called by grace. None of us is worthy. We are all called by grace. The truth is that this ministry is therefore about the God who calls us. The God who indeed makes us worthy of our calling. The God who takes our willing and reflexive offering of ourselves and multiplies it in order to feed the multitudes right around us who are hungry and thirsty for the word of the living God. God is still calling us to speak and to live prophetically in the midst of this world. He is still calling disciples and apprentices who are willing to heed his call and trust that he will make them deeply worthy of this calling to which they have been called. And so my prayer for us this day, friends, is that God would give us the grace and the courage to heed his call. Give us the grace and the courage to engage those right around us so that they too, as we, might have the opportunity to respond in obedience and faith. Amen. Friends, please stand. And let us now, in the words of the Apostles' Creed, confess and reaffirm the faith of our baptism in this God who calls us into his service, the God who also makes us worthy of that calling, as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, please sit or kneel as you are able as we pray. As we gather in God's presence, let us offer our petitions in faith to Almighty God. God of new visions, we lift up before you the countries and nations of this world. We pray for victims of violence of any kind, but especially faith-based violence. We pray for people highly placed in positions of power, authority, and responsibility. 
that they may focus their eyes on you. And we pray for the lowly victims of power, that they may also focus their eyes on you. We pray for those who bless their lips with their lips, but curse with their mouths, including ourselves. We pray for those who have been harmed and those whom we have harmed by our uncharitable and unchristlike words. We pray for those who are ill. We remember and pray in particular for the following members of this congregation and their caregivers. Alton. Alton. Courtney. Courtney. Carol. Carol. Thelma. Thelma. Maureen. Maureen. Joe. Joe. David. David. George. George. Clifton. Clifton. Kathleen. Kathleen. Reuben. Reuben. Nellie. Nellie. Andrew. Andrew. Carmen. Carmen. Rita. Rita. Tourette. Tourette. Felicia. Felicia. Fitzroy. Fitzroy. Ian. Ian. Pat. Pat. Paul. Paul. Ethel. Ethel. Joan. Joan. Doreen. Doreen. Rima. Rima. Hyacinth. Hyacinth. And Pauline. Pauline. We pray for those now on our hearts and minds, for those who have asked the prayers of this congregation, especially Thelma Chasto, Evelyn Greenwich, Ruthlyn Hoyt, Iabo Organduran, Diane Bessessar, and Joyce Welcome. Grant them grace and power of your presence that they might know that they are not alone in bearing the burden of their illness. We pray for those facing the end of life, those for whom this day or perhaps this moment will be their last. We pray especially for those whose lives have been impacted either directly or indirectly by the COVID-19 virus and its new variants. Give them the gift of prayer that they may pour out their hearts to you. We pray for the church and its leaders, particularly in this time of the pandemic that we may continue to hear and respond to your call to be fishers of people. In the Anglican Church in Canada, we pray for the Most Reverend David Edwards, Metropolitan and the people and clergy of the Ecclesiastical Province of Canada. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for the Dean, Council and congregations of the Atlantic and Montreal areas of the Eastern Synod. In our own Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and people of the Church of Bangladesh. We pray for our neighbors and for those to whom you call us to be neighbors. We pray for those who visit us week by week and for those joining us now either in person or online. Meet them even in their area of need. Draw to this community of faith, children, youth, and families. Let the light of your countenance shine upon them that they may sense your presence near, and even now may receive your blessings in this moment. Rock of our salvation, through Christ and your Holy Spirit, bring us into the new world that you are shaping, even as this world is passing away. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us therefore confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand now for the greeting of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. As the altar is prepared now for the celebration of the Eucharistic feast. I invite you, as you may wish to do, to place your offering into the collection basket provided at the front. for all that we offer this day for the work of ministry. Let us pray. Loving God, before the world began, you called us. Make holy all we offer you this day and strengthen us in that calling. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer, Form 3. Eucharistic Prayer, Form 3. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. By water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a holy people in Jesus Christ our Lord. You renew that mystery in bread and wine and nourish us to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the holy people who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 
holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please sit or kneel as you are able. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world, in him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Creator of all, 
You gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. of Christ given for you. Take this in remembrance that Christ has died for you. Continue to feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ given for you. Take this in remembrance that Christ has died for you. Continue to feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Friends, please stand. Let us now, in the words of the prayer after communion, give God thanks for having been called to this service, for having been gathered in his presence. Give God thanks that he is the God who calls, the God who makes those whom he calls worthy. As we say together, gracious God, our hands have taken holy things. 
Our lives have been nourished by the body of your Son. May we who have eaten at this holy table be strengthened for your service in your world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. So we say together, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. <laughs> it is good to see all of you again today, and um, I pray that you are all uh, keeping safe. I know that at the forefront of our minds, uh, for many of us in any event, um, of course, are the events that are happening in, in the society around us, um, and the, the continued uh, spread of this virus. And so we continue uh, to pray uh, for ourselves, for this community, and also for those, um, as we have said, who are directly or indirectly impacted uh, by the virus. And I pray that you uh, and your families, both you here and those watching us live, that you are indeed are keeping safe and that we're all doing our part to help to keep each other safe uh, as we go through these times. Um, I am also just mindful of the fact that even though we go through these challenging times, uh, that we are in the presence of the God who stands with us and the God who goes with us. And so we know that even in the midst of this, uh, we are not alone. And so we just pray uh, for continued experience uh, of that presence, of God's presence with us, um, that we too may remain faithful to all that we have been called to do uh, in this time as well. Uh, on that note, we continue to offer ministry as we're able to do. Um, and so I encourage you to join us for morning prayer uh, week by week at 7.30. Join us this evening at 6 p.m. for evening prayer. Uh, as I said, a wonderful way to end the day uh, with friends as we gather for prayer and to listen to scripture and to hymns. Uh, we continue our Bible study this coming Thursday. Uh, we will be looking at Revelation chapter 2. So we started uh, this past Thursday, and so we'll be looking now at the letters to Ephesus and Smyrna, uh, Pergam Pergamum, and Theatira. And so I invite you to, to plug in. Um, even if you don't have a book, <laughs> uh, if you'd like to get a book, let me know. But if you don't have a book and you simply want to listen, um, I encourage you to, to call in and to listen to the discussion, um, and even to, to contribute um, as best you're able uh, to do. This is an opportunity for us to go uh, deeper into the Word of God, and particularly into a book that many of us uh, have either read, got frightened by, and set aside, uh, or just set aside because we don't really understand what's happening. Um, and so here's an opportunity for us to, to begin to try to uncode uh, some of this, and at least to, to learn um, what it is that Christ is saying to us in and through the revelation to John. Uh, the men will continue to meet this coming set by Dr. Tony Evans. Reports to vestry are due this evening. So if you are uh, leading or responsible for preparing a report for any uh, group or organization, uh, those should be in by this evening. Um, if your group or organization has not been able to do a whole lot, we understand, uh, obviously, because of the pandemic one, I think all of those are important uh, for this vestry report. And so uh, I encourage you to return those uh, this evening. Our next service of Holy Baptism is going to be on the 7th of February. Um, we are already, I would say, uh, fully subscribed for this particular service. I know that there are others who are interested. And so we're actually now booking into the next uh, available date for baptism um, because, of course, we have to be sure to maintain uh, our limits in terms of, of gathering. So if you know of anyone who's to 4.30 p.m., 
And again, we continue to, to pray for the cafe um, and for this ministry uh, that has continued even through uh, these difficult times and for all those uh, who are impacted um, by the ministry being offered here. The Black Creek Community Health Center um, will be hosting an, an information session. It's going to be this coming Tuesday, that is the 26th of January, from 5 to 6.30 p.m. And this is an information session on the COVID vaccine. Um, the session is geared towards uh, community members in advance of the rollout of the vaccine to the broader um, communities. And so if you're interested or if you know of anyone who may be interested, uh, they may register. You'll need to register in order to get uh, the Zoom link and invitation um, at info at bcchc.com and the phone number 416-240-2027. Um, the information will also be provided on our website. So if you go to the website, you'll be able to find this information um, as well. But this is an information session this Tuesday evening from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Um, geared towards the, the rollout of the COVID vaccine uh, to the broader community. Uh, they also have now a COVID support line, which is going to be useful for any of those individuals uh, who are in need of help, uh, for example, with their income or any other supports uh, that are needed in this time uh, of the pandemic. Um, so persons who have lost wages need contacts to different services. And now as we conclude our time together on this third Sunday after the Epiphany, let us pray. Gracious God, our hands have taken holy things. Our lives have been nourished by the body of your Son. May we who have eaten at your holy table be strengthened for service in your world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.